This video is going to be all about traveling to Europe and then within Europe. So stay tuned. Hello YouTube, my name is Shruti and you're watching Tickle Me Pink. Welcome to video number 3 of my travel tip series, How to Plan a Trip to Europe. I have two other videos in this series so I highly recommend that you check those out first and then come back to this one. This video, like I said, is going to be all about transportation. So jumping right in, the first thing that I want to talk about is traveling to Europe. So the only way that you can do it from India <laughs> is obviously by flight. The website that I use for mostly all of my bookings is skyscanner.com. I honestly feel like I get the cheapest tickets or at least the cheapest options available on Skyscanner. So one of the tips for booking cheap flights is to book your flights three months before your departure date. Now, this isn't like a written in stone kind of rule. Um, things do change depending on a few factors. But generally, if you book your flight at least three months before your departure date, you should be able to get the cheapest deals. The times that this can change is if you are going for like a specific event, in a specific city. So for example, if you are like attending the Oktoberfest in Munich or if you're going for a particular music festival in a particular place, then in that case, you should book your tickets possibly like a year in advance. That might be a bit of a stretch, but like honestly, in that case, it's really helpful to book your tickets much in advance because everyone from all over the world are going to be going to that particular place on those particular dates. Another time when this rule of three months can change is if you're going during like peak travel time. So if you're traveling in like December or uh, during Christmas and New Year, obviously tickets are going to be a bit more expensive. Also, if you're traveling in like the summer months, so like May, June, when like kids have holidays from school, again, ticket prices might go up at that time. So generally what i've seen and also because it's a good time to visit europe is around like the end of summer beginning of autumn period so like july august september like those months generally you get cheaper tickets and because the weather is really nice because it's like neither too hot nor too cold it's nice to go to europe at that time one of the reasons why i like to choose the autumn period and not summer is because summer in Europe can get really, really hot. And for some bizarre reason, like I do not know the reason why, if you do know, let me know down in the comments. Hotels in Europe don't have air conditioning and they don't even have fans. Things are definitely getting better with more and more hotels having like air conditioning in them. But so many hotels, and I'm talking about good hotels where you're paying a lot of money, do not have air conditioning and they don't even have fans. All of them have heating for the winter, but they don't have air conditioning for the summer. So that's why also it's a good idea to go when like the weather is a little bit cooler, like it's not freezing because it's not winter, but it's cooler so that even if you don't have air conditioning, you can sort of survive. Now to travel within Europe, there are three options. Option number one is of course the train. Now the train system in Europe is super duper like convenient almost all the major cities are connected together by train and within the country also like the regional trains so the regional trains are really good that they get you from like the major cities to the countryside so trains are really good and they're super duper well connected because of ddlj and because of bollywood movies there's this huge hype about whether you should take the Eurail Pass. Now, I personally have never taken the Eurail Pass, so I don't know like the intricacies involved in that. But from what I've read and heard, if you're doing like a shorter trip, so like one to three weeks, then taking the Eurail Pass actually turns out to be a lot more expensive than booking trains on your own or even sometimes like cheaper flights. I think you'll have to do a little bit of research on your own for this one to see if taking the Eurail Pass is actually like helps you save money or you should just book train tickets on your own. Um, for me, I think booking train tickets on, on your own is the easiest way to go because honestly, all you have to do is type on Google like Paris to Amsterdam train ticket. That's all you have to do and all your options come in front of you. For train tickets, honestly, the earlier you book, the cheaper tickets you get. As you move towards your departure date, the tickets do obviously become more expensive. Uh, once you've decided your itinerary of which cities you're going to and you've booked your 
flight tickets to Europe, I would say at the same time book your train tickets because that because like three to three and a half months in advance is a good enough time to book your train tickets for you to get good deals. The next thing that you can choose is flights. And honestly, flights can be so much cheaper than trains. Now, there are two low cost budget airlines that sort of connect all of Europe, which is EasyJet and Ryanair. At least these are the two that I have used. There might be more, but these are the most famous and also the ones that I've used, so I'll talk about them. These two airlines are super duper budget and they have good connectivity. If you travel by any of them, you can get tickets as cheap as 15 euros between cities. The catch with these airlines is, of course, that they only allow one handbag and a small bag, and you have to pay for checked in luggage you have to pay if you want to reserve your seat you have to pay for food but the thing is if you learn to travel light like if you can pack a two weeks worth trip in only like a small bag and a backpack these budget airlines can be super good for you to save money and also like get around everywhere um, the other thing, another thing that I'd like to mention is that EasyJet generally is a little bit more expensive than Ryanair but EasyJet like the dimensions of the hand luggage that you can carry is like the normal dimensions of almost all international airlines and the airports that EasyJet lands in are generally like the main airports of that particular city. Uh, Ryanair on the other hand has dimensions of your uh, hand luggage which is slightly smaller than other like international airlines so that's where they sort of make money because you assume that it's the normal dimensions you carry your bag and it doesn't fit in their sort of like bag checker so they make you check it in so definitely check out the dimensions they have on their website and get your luggage according to that and the last way to travel within Europe is of course cars so you can hire a car and then whiz from one city to another. In terms of getting a license, the only place that my husband and I have driven in Europe is Ireland. And for that, we did not need to get an international license. Your Indian license, as long as you have the one with the chip, which I think you now everyone has, like the card license, as long as you have that one, I think it's okay to drive in Europe. But again, the only place we've done it is Ireland. So check the regulations for each country before you go to hire a car. Uh, getting an international license is pretty easy. So all you have to do is like check online and I'm sure you'll be able to get all the information that you need. My recommendation is that if you want to hire a car and if you want to do that kind of trip, then it makes no sense to hire a car and drive if the only thing you're visiting are big cities. So like if you're doing like a Paris, Milan, Barcelona, like I don't know, like only the if you're only doing like major cities, then it makes absolutely no sense to hire a car, obviously, because you're like going from one country to another. The thing with a hired car is that if you pick it up at one location and you drop it off back at the same location, it turns out to be a lot cheaper. So if you're doing like this multi-city hopping tour, it doesn't really make sense because you're going to be you're going to end up dropping it off at another country and your higher fees are going to be really really expensive uh the other thing is that within the cities um the lanes are extremely narrow parking is really really difficult to find so driving within a city is quite difficult where a car comes in handy is if you're doing the countryside because of course public transport isn't that good in the countryside and the countryside generally has to do with things like nature so when you're in a car and you're driving by yourself through like the highlands of scotland or if you're driving like along the sea in like the southern part of italy like that's when it makes sense to hire a car because that is when you can actually enjoy driving the car because the roads will be a lot wider there will be less like people and cars on the road so it'll just make the entire experience more enjoyable and now coming to traveling within a city uh like I said, public transport in most of the major cities in Europe is absolutely amazing. One of the things I highly recommend is that as soon as you land, try to get the like the transport pass that they have. Like I in London, I think you can get the Oyster card, but definitely pick it up because it really, really helps. The travel card that you get works for both metros as well as buses. So Honestly, you have like major connectivity to the whole city. Another tip that I can give you is to keep the metro map, like pick it up at whatever station you find it and sort of keep it in your bag because 
that way you'll be able to navigate throughout the city with ease so yeah that brings me to the end of video number three i hope you guys enjoyed it as always if you have any more questions regarding this particular topic let me know down in the comments and i will try to answer them for you um, my next video which is the last in this series is about what are the different like fun activities things that you can do like different activities that you can do within europe and also about food so yeah this is going to be i think this is going to be my most fun video to film but stay tuned for that that one is coming up next but of course if you liked this video then give it a big fat thumbs up and yeah subscribe to my channel for weekly fashion lifestyle and travel videos like this i'll see you guys next time bye